But first, a Kansas bill one family says could have prevented their father from going to prison for a murder he didn't commit. Good evening, I'm Caitlin Canute. Thank you for watching 41 Action News on air and on your favorite streaming device. If you're joining us after watching Dateline tonight, you just saw the story of Olin P. Coons. He was convicted and sentenced to life in prison for a murder he said he didn't commit. Coons maintained his innocence, saying he was set up instead in a murder-suicide. It's something that we followed right here on 41 Action News. You'll recall he spent 12 years behind bars before being released this past November. But that freedom was brief. He died in February. A jailhouse informant played a role in that initial guilty verdict that sent Coons to prison. Now there's a bill in Kansas that's aimed at regulating that type of testimony. But as 41 Action News reporter Ariel Rothfield shows us, that bill is stuck in limbo. When Pete Coons went to prison for a murder he did not commit, a jailhouse informant was the damning witness. One of the key pieces of evidence that was brought against my father were the, man's, uh, the words of a man named Rupert, a jailhouse witness. This is Pete's son, who spoke to Kansas lawmakers in March, describing the witness who helped put his father away, a man with a history of committing crimes of dishonesty who made a deal with prosecutors for his testimony. In our case, Rupert's words left us with a history of pain and suffering that can no longer be mended. Referred to as jailhouse witnesses, their credibility is often questioned. We know it's unreliable because jailhouse informants will often, for example, give forward only evidence that was provided in the discovery. So uh, if they're housed in the same cell as defendant, they can read the same paperwork, the police reports, get that information and then say, oh, well, the defendant told me when they confessed. So far, nine states have passed laws to regulate jailhouse witness testimony. Each state's laws address different parts of the legal process, but all of them aim to avoid situations like Pete's. The question is just, how does, how does it become a priority? In Kansas, lawmakers were on track to pass similar measures. House Bill 2366 passed the House unanimously, but never made it out of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Lawmakers returned to Topeka in May, so we asked this committee if they would discuss this bill. In an email, Vice Chair State Senator Rick Wilborn said, the committee does not plan to work any bills when they reconvene, but they may take a closer look at it next year. Until this bill passes, until we have a tracking mechanism, we actually can't know how often jailhouse informants are used in Kansas. For Pete's kids, seeing this through would be fulfilling his last wish. After everything he had suffered, his deepest wishes were to see that this bill to be brought into law. Um, so that others wouldn't have to suffer the way that we have suffered. Reporting in Kansas City, Ariel Rothfield, 41 Action News. Thank you, Ariel. So let's take a closer look at this bill. If passed into law, here's what it would require. Prosecutors would be required to track when they use jailhouse witnesses. Judges would have to hold a pretrial hearing to determine the reliability of that witness. Juries would get special instructions before considering that testimony. And if a jailhouse witness testified and got a break on their own sentence, the victims of their crime would be notified.